I finally read Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad M. Brooks, a.k.a. Shadiversity. It's a... It's a lot of shads. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Okay, so I didn't do a whole lot of research into, uh, what the consensus on this book was before I read it. Uh, however, I didn't get to it until this point because I was very wary of it. I was thinking, yeah, that's not going to be good because... One, it's a first-time novel, two, it's self-published, and three, it's self-published by a YouTuber. Which, for those of you who don't know, Shadowversity is another YouTuber. He talks about, like, uh, medieval weapons and history and such. And the, the thing is that, like, those three things together do not usually work well in combination, okay? They usually produce some uh, pretty awful stories when that happens. And that being said, I don't think Shadow of the Conqueror is awful. I think I, I just have extremely mixed feelings on it. There's some stuff that's very, very good, and there's some stuff that I would say is great, actually. But then there's a lot of stuff that's just absolutely awful, and just, oh god, it should never have happened. So this is a fantasy novel. It takes place in a world which is like just a giant floating continent, you know, it has airships and stuff, that's how people get around, and uh, if you fall off the continent, rather than plummeting towards something, you will actually eventually hit a barrier, and they'll teleport you to the top of the world, and then you'll keep falling, so you basically just fall until you die of thirst, which is... Okay, that's kind of interesting. And uh, the main character is also pretty interesting, because he is, unlike most fantasy protagonists, he's not a young kid in his late teens or early 20s. He's actually 82 years old at the beginning. And not only that, he used to be this war hero, and then he became a revolutionary who overthrew his government, and then he became a horrible tyrant, and then he was overthrown, and everyone thought he was dead, and then he went into hiding for 20-some-odd years, and that's where we see him at the beginning of the book. Uh, and then he attempts suicide, but through some magical shenanigans, which I don't really feel like getting into, he winds up getting magical powers and also becoming young again. And, well, if that sounds a little Mary Sue-ish, it, uh, it, it is. You know, he is genuinely just an ultra-uber-powerful badass the entire book, but it is a super unique concept, and I think it's done very well for the most part. So, the world is really good. The main character is genuinely great. There are other characters in here who I think are really good. You know, maybe not as good as Dalen himself, but th they are still really good. Uh, I liked s most of the magic stuff. You know, it, it, it got a little, uh, it got a little too broad, I felt. Like, t by the end, you could basically do anything with magic, but overall I thought it was cool. Uh, I liked the uh, culture and history of the world that it goes into. I liked, uh, just, th there's a lot of stuff in here that I enjoy. But the problem, the, the biggest problem, is that... The plot, or the story, I should say, is just dog shit. And so, what, what it winds up being is that there are a bunch of good pieces, but they don't tie together well. They don't mesh together well, because the story, for the most part, just isn't good. Like, for about the first, I, I'd say, 70 or 80 pages of this book, almost nothing happens. Like, it introduces us to Dalen, it shows us his mental state, which is not good. It, uh, shows him try to commit suicide, it shows him get his powers, and re then he starts learning about his powers. And most of him learning about his powers is just him walking around, testing stuff out, and then talking out loud to himself about, Oh, hey, I just discovered this new thing. And Dalen talks to himself a lot in this book, actually, which wouldn't bother me at all if it weren't for him constantly doing it with his powers and stuff, because I feel like that would be better with an internal monologue, and it just feels a little awkward, but I don't know, that's a small thing in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, it takes about 70 pages for anything to actually happen, and then most of the events after that are pretty disconnected. And part of me feels like that was done deliberately, like this was done as more of a character-based story, but then once you get near the end, it feels like, oh no, this this was trying to be plot-driven, this was trying to be heavy, this was trying to have, you know, stakes and have the fate of the world be in the balance, and so 
it um it it just doesn't work, you know? Like it's it's hard to even explain without going into uh detail on every plot point, but basically they just don't tie together. They don't really lead into each other. They just sort of one happens and then it's over and then another happens and then it's over and then when the climax comes, it comes kind of out of nowhere. For that matter, there are like three climaxes in this, and I'll probably do a little bit more detail in the spoiler section, but basically, the first climax is, I would say, actually pretty good, because it's just very character-focused, it's just about Dalen and his relationship with his, uh, with his new friends, and as uh, the final fighting is happening, you really don't want anyone to get hurt, and you kind of see where everyone's coming from, so it, it's a good climax, okay? But then the second climax is the one that kind of comes out of nowhere, and it's very... I, I was about to say plot-driven, but that's not the word. It's like, it just kind of comes out of nowhere, and it's like, oh, fate of this city is in the balance, and it's like, uh, it's hard to care. And then the uh, third climax is another one which is a little bit more character-driven, uh, but it's... I... Man, man, it just... I don't know, there's not enough build-up to it, whereas... The first climax had all this build-up to it, and then it had all this tension, and then it was released. The other one, j j just it didn't have enough tension built up, so there couldn't be a release. And so, y yeah, the, the plot of this book is just, uh, it's a mess. It really is. And, again, Shad is a first-time author, so it didn't really surprise me when that happened. That's actually a pretty common uh, issue with first-time authors. Uh, but it does, I mean, that doesn't make it any better. But let's talk about the genuinely the best part of this book, and that is Dalen himself, the protagonist. Now, as I said, the very concept of his character is super unique, but even beyond that, just seeing him be consumed by his own guilt, and seeing him want to try to atone for his crimes, and seeing him realize that he's still not a great person at the beginning, but he slowly becomes better, that is, uh... I, I mean, it's, it's a great great arc to watch. And, in fact, there's a pretty huge part of it that is taken up by, like, well, can a person like this even be redeemed? Or is he worthy of being redeemed? And just, it's, man, it's really fascinating. And I think that the book is definitely trying to say, like, yeah, he can be redeemed. But, you know, the question is still posed. It's still a good arc to watch. I, I, I still really liked it, okay? I, I really liked Dalen. And the only real issue is that he's just way too much of a Mary Sue. Like, as soon as he gets his powers, he figures out how to use them almost instantly, perfectly. Uh, and then, as it goes on, he only gets better and better at it, until by the end, he's just almost like a god, and it's just... It, it's kind of dumb. And uh, that, that aside, he's also just, like, a super smart dude. He kind of knows everything on how to get out of crisis. Uh, he is generally a pretty nice guy throughout most of the book. Like, n not always, but even when he isn't, they they kind of try and justify his acts, so... It's, uh... Yeah, it's... It, he's not a perfect character, but, like, just that the concept and the arc of seeing him grow and change is... It, it's genuinely amazing. And there's not a lot of other characters. Like, there's a, an arch knight, who is basically just a magical good guy, knight guy, uh, named... Uh, Arek, who is, he runs into Dalen pretty early on and starts journeying with him, and as time goes on he starts to suspect more and more that Dalen isn't who he says he is, and I'm not gonna go into detail here, but like, seeing his uh, relationship with Dalen grow and change is, I mean, that, that's really good, and Arek is also just like, a good guy on his own, he's pretty badass, so I, I liked seeing all that stuff. Uh, and then there's another major character named Lyra, who has a unique relationship with Daylin. That's a, that's not funny, I shouldn't be laughing. But, yeah, she has a unique relationship with him, um, but even beyond that, she is pretty good as a character. I, I don't know why I hesitate so much to say that, but yeah, she, she is a pretty good character as well. Like, she has her own personality and goals and all that, which are separate from his, but she also has her own relationship with him, and uh, she has her own growth and change throughout the story as well. So overall, character cast of this book is pretty great. I think that's about it for the non-spoiler section. Uh, would I recommend this book? I... I don't know. 
Um, because, like I said, it's first-time author and it's self-published, so there's a lot of amateur mistakes in there, like the prose isn't that great, the story kind of goes all over the place, uh, there's a few typos I noticed, it's, uh, it's not perfect, and, well, if you're really, really looking for some fantasy fair, which is a little bit closer to modern technology without having, like, gunpowder and everything, then I guess check it out for everybody else. Um, I, I don't think this really has anything that great to offer. Okay, so spoilers. Uh, first things first, there's a lot of talk of rape in this, and I would say that it's handled pretty well for the most part. Because it's, it's always treated as a horrible thing that happens, and it's never tried to... It, it's never downplayed or justified at all. And it's also brought up that, like, even if you aren't physically coercing someone or threatening them in the moment, it can still be rape, so... Yeah, I, I liked how that was handled. Uh, the only thing about it is with Lyra. Now, at the beginning, it's made clear that talk of sex makes her really nervous, and it's kind of played for laughs, at least it feels like it's play, played for laughs at the beginning, and then later you find out that it's because when she was 14, she got forced into Dalis's, uh, or Dalen's harem, I guess you'd call it, so she got raped by him a bunch of times, and then she wound up pregnant, and then she got an abortion, which left her unable to have children, and so, yeah, it makes sense that she would be, uh, traumatized by that, obviously, and how it would change her as a person so much, and it's, it's just that having it be treated for comedy at the beginning just feels, I guess, poor taste? It feels like it's in poor taste, and, I mean, I'm not, like, getting mad at Shad or anything about this, I'm just saying, like, this is a heavy subject, and if you're gonna handle it, handle it well. And he does that for the most part, it's just that one bit later on, I, I look back on that, that did bother me a lot. Now, as for the first climax that I was talking about, where Dalen and Arek are, are talking, and Arek finally figures out that, like, Dalen is actually Dalis the Conqueror, well, he goes ballistic and tries to kill Dalen, because it turns out that not only did Dalen kill his family years ago, but uh, Arek was actually the leader of the revolution that uh, deposed him, that brought him out of power. And so as they're fighting, you're like, y you realize, man, yeah, Arek has very good reason to kill this dude, but by this point, we realize that Dalen has changed, and we realize that uh, he wants to actually do good in the world, and he has done some good in the world, and so we really don't want either of them to be killed. So. It's actually a very, very good fight scene. It's very impactful. And so, like I said, this is the best of the climaxes. So, I... I mean, I don't have a lot to say about it. It's just like, yes, that's a great character moment from both of them. And then I want to talk about the Dawnists a little bit. Now, the Dawnists are basically just dudes who want to bring back the Dawn Empire, which is what uh, Dalen ruled over. And... They don't go into a lot of detail about what exactly that means. Now, um, it, it's definitely mentioned how there's a lot of poverty in their country at this point, and how the Dawn Empire was kind of this uh, proto-socialist uh, empire. Like, they don't go into a lot of detail about it, but it definitely has some uh, socialist ideas in there. And so they're definitely arguing for that, but beyond that, like, it it doesn't really go into detail about, like, what sort of government they'd have, like, would it still be an absolute dictatorship the way it was when Dalen was in charge, and, uh, you know, and, and if they had gone into stuff like that, it would have been better. Uh, and even beyond that, like, at the, the Donists tried to bring an island to crash into the capital city at the end, and it's only saved by Dalen at the last second, and it's just, uh, it just makes them seem way too crazy. You know, like, like uh, this book is definitely siding against the Donists, and I'm not, like, saying that they're in the wrong, or I'm not saying that the book is in the wrong for siding against the Donists, because, like, Dalen did do some genuinely horrible things. Like, he, he was a dictator, that's just what happens. But, I mean, like, it, it would be much more interesting if the Donists had one or two legitimate points, because at one point, 
uh, they bring up poverty, and Dalen says, well, like, you're, you, you were even poorer during the Dawn Empire, and I'm like, oh, okay, I, I guess they were, that was never mentioned until now. And so, like, if they just had one or two good points that were actually brought up, then that would be that would make them much better as villains because as it stands they don't even really have that much screen time so there's just not much we can do with them and well that's that's just disappointing you know in a in a book that has a couple of other really good characters that we didn't really get a good villain so that's all I got for you I just wanted to thank my patrons Apo Savalainen, Abrahaj Singh, Christopher Hawkins, Joseph Pendergraft, and Melanie Austin you guys are great as well as all the other names here you know they're great too and everyone watching to this point, you're pretty cool. Uh, if you could like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, that that does really help me. That that you know makes me more visible, gives me money, which I need to to live. And uh, 